Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 update series. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about struct inheritance. Now, inheritance is actually another way that structs are very similar to objects in GameMaker. One struct can inherit from another. What this means is that the struct that inherits, the child struct, will basically get all of the code inside of the parent struct. So when can structs inherit? So structs created with a constructor can inherit from another constructor. Structs created with struct literals cannot inherit though. So only structs created with a constructor can inherit. And right now, the struct that is being inherited from must be a script function. So you can make a constructor as we have done in prior tutorials, and you can put that constructor inside of a method variable, but you can't inherit those. I don't know if this is a bug in the current version of GameMaker 2.3, because the example in the manual actually shows inheriting from a method variable, but this will actually crash GameMaker if you do it right now. So it might be a bug or the manual might be wrong, but right now, if you want to inherit, the thing to keep in mind is that the constructor which is being inherited must be a script function. Constructors can only inherit from one other constructor. So struct C cannot inherit both from A and B at the same time. However, you can have a chain of inheritance. So C could inherit from B, which could inherit from A and so on. The form of struct inheritance is actually pretty straightforward. You just write your struct as you normally would. So your name, the name of your struct, the arguments you're gonna pass in, and then the new part is you type colon, the name of the struct you're inheriting from, and any arguments that you want to pass in. And then finally, you finish it off as normal with the constructor and then all of the code that you put in. So a real example would be function vector two, x and y constructor. This would be the one that we're going to inherit. Then function vector three, x, y, z, colon vector two, x, y. This is the part that's added so that inheritance works. And we'll see more examples of this when we switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 in just a moment. But note that we're not repeating the x and y because again, with inheritance, you get all of that code for free. So all we have to type for our vector three is the Z. X and Y will come with the inheritance. So why do you want to use inheritance? What's so good about it? Well, if you're familiar with inheritance from another language or with objects in GameMaker, you probably don't need to be convinced about how great inheritance is. But basically it keeps you from repeating code, it saves time, and overall it just makes everything more flexible and easy to use, read, and maintain. And we'll see a clear example of this when we switch over in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to talk about two other things. First, I want to talk about how struct inheritance differs from object inheritance in GameMaker. The primary way that it is different is that it does not pass along its class. And what I mean by this, and you're probably familiar with how object inheritance works in GameMaker, if not, there will be a link up above. But let's say you have an enemy parent object and then you have a bunch of children of that enemy parent. Well, in GameMaker, you can do things like say with enemy parent, and that will work on all versions of both the enemy parent and its child. All the collision functions work with parents and the children. So you can do place meeting with the parent object and that will work for all of its children. And there are built-in functions to determine whether one object is the ancestor of another object. Structs don't have any of that. All structs really do is pass along their code to their children. The next thing to know about structs versus object inheritance is that structs always inherit. And I have both a question mark and an asterisk because as you will see when we get into code, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But with objects, you can overwrite code or inherit and overwrite it. And in some ways you can do all of that with structs too, but conceptually at least it's a little bit different. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have struct A, B, and C where B inherits from A and C inherits from B. The first struct runs its parent's constructor code and then it runs its own code. So if B inherits from A, when you call B, what B does is it calls A, runs A's code, and then runs B's code. And if C were to call B, well, the first thing C would do is call B, and then the first thing B would do is call A, A's code would run, then B's code, and then C's. So basically, if you have inheritance in a chain like this, what you get is the parent's code running one after the other. So A, then B, then C. But with that, let's actually switch over to GameMaker Studio and see some examples. Okay, so here we are in GameMaker. Over here, I have three structs. We have type A, type B, and type C. Type A won't inherit from anyone. B will inherit from A. C will inherit from B. Type A has the variable type. Then we add number into type B. And then for C, we add a function, which prints the type and the number. And you can see that we're not repeating any of the code because B will inherit the type from A and C will inherit the type from B. 
So we can put a breakpoint in right here. We can create a struct, we'll call it my struct, with new type C. We'll pass in example and the number one, and then we'll ask it to print its type and number. Let's run this in the debugger and step through it to see exactly what is happening. So here we are, we've stopped on this line. We're gonna go into this function. We've called type C. And remember, the first thing that C is going to do is call B. And there we go, C called B before running any of its code. B calls A, again, before running its code. And then we declare the type, we declare the number, and then finally we declare the function. And so now we can inspect our struct and we can see it has type example, number one, and its function. And if we hit play here, there we go, example one. It's printed its type and its number. But that is basically a toy example. You wouldn't use it for anything real. So now let's go through a more complicated but much more useful real life example. So here we go. We have the vector2 struct constructor that I've referenced in prior tutorials. As you can see, it has an X and a Y and all of these functions. So what this 2D vector constructor does is it creates a struct that has an X and a Y set to the numbers that you pass in. But let's say you just want to create a vector that has zero, zero as its values. Well, one thing you could do is you could just write this without inheriting. The problem is while this would give you a vector with X and Y being zero, it doesn't get you all of these functions. If you wanted the vector returned by this constructor to have all of those functions, you would have to copy and paste all of them in. And then every time you wanted to change one of those functions, you would have to change it in both places. Again, let's say you wanted to have a random vector. You wanted the ability to just say, make a vector of this length in a random direction. Well, you could do that with this constructor, but if it doesn't inherit from the primary vector constructor, it doesn't have access to all of those functions. And here you can start to see the power of inheritance because not only do you save yourself from repeating all of this code right here, but you can make changes to this code. You can add or remove functions and all of your other constructors that inherit from it will get the value of that code for free. They'll just be updated. Now there's actually one other thing I wanna go through here, which is I wanna go through how arguments are passed in with a little bit more detail. Because you might notice that the primary vector constructor takes the arguments X and Y, but the zero vector constructor takes no arguments and doesn't pass in any right here. And the vector random takes an entirely new argument and still doesn't pass in any. So let's step through this in the debugger and see what is actually going on. So here we are, we've stopped on this line, we're creating vector A at five five. Remember, this vector passes in its variables. There's really nothing interesting to see here, so we're just gonna step over it. And now we come to vector B. Vector zero will create a vector where X and Y are both zero, and it inherits everything from the primary vector class. So let's see what happens when we step in. We can come in here and we should expect to call the parent constructor, which we do. And you can see argument zero and argument one are both undefined. We'll have another video about this where we talk about this idea in greater detail or at least in the proper context. But with 2.3, GameMaker now allows you to specify arguments but not pass them in. And if you do that, those arguments will be set to undefined. So argument zero, which is X, and argument one, which is Y, weren't referenced or passed in, so they're gonna be set to undefined. And what that means is that X and Y will initially be set to undefined. So X will equal undefined, we can see X undefined, and y will equal undefined. And so once vector a is initialized, we come back in to our vector zero constructor and we initialize x to zero and y to zero. So now x is zero and y currently undefined, but we step through it, now y will be equal to zero. And we can come over here and see that vector a has been initialized to five and five and vector b has been initialized to zero and zero. And to look at the next variation of this, we can come into our random vector where we're passing in an entirely different argument. This works pretty much the same way. Vector random will call its parent constructor. X and Y will be set to undefined. And then we simply come back into this constructor. We pass in this argument. Argument zero is 10. That's what we passed in. And we simply overwrite X and Y with the values that we wanted. And now you can see that we have vec C down here. And we can add these two vectors together and then print them to the screen, 5, 5, 8.31, 14.44. And again, we get to do that because through inheritance, our zero vector and random vector inherit all of the methods in the primary vector class. So in summary, structs made with a constructor can inherit, struct literals cannot, and at least right now, struct constructor stored in method variables cannot be inherited. 
but structs made with a script function can. It has the form of your current or new struct and its arguments and then colon, the parent and its arguments, where as you can see, you can actually fudge these arguments a little bit because GameMaker will just turn them into undefined. And the primary value of inheritance is that it allows you to reuse your code and it makes things easier to modify and change down the road. The links in this slide are down below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.